people. Not to have, current... you new, have you New Year's resolution? Oh, my New Year's resolution was not to do a New Year's resolution. Yes, love that. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr Curran is here. He's uh, the master of debunking medical myths, but what things can really make a difference to your health? Yeah. New Year's resolution guy? No, not really. No. I mean, you know what? New Year didn't used to be 1st of January. It used to be sometime in March. Really? In the medieval era, yeah, it was something else different. So, every day's the same. I wonder if there's something in our waters to be programmed for the reset in March and we don't know about it. It's interesting. Do you know what? What's that. interesting about that is a lot of people do take up diets in March. All right. right. So that's interesting. Easter. Well, I say a lot. Here now it's with his simple Yuri Geller-like hacks. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> to try in 2024. <laughs> Morning, you. Hello. Yeah, we got a range of different stuff here. Yeah. Normally, with you, it's like, pfft, nah. I know. I thought that. we'd change it a little These bit. These are all yeses. These, These are, are all, all yeses, things. yeah. Evidence based, real stuff, not pseudoscience. So we're going to start with channel your inner dolphin to lower your stress levels. Oh, yeah. This is something I think you've done before. So any cold body of water, if you oh, splash is... your face on it, yeah. it's something you've done. Oh, it helps to lower stress, yeah. and it does that because it stimulates the vagus nerve, uh, which helps to lower your heart rate and blood pressure, and hopefully anxiety and stress as well. Well, you know so I like my cold, sorry, you know I like my cold water swimming and all of that, right? Yeah. Does that just me sticking? Because I think that was the morning after soccer raid. Yeah. And I and finished soccer raid it. and I had and I was get back got back down here, so I think I didn't. I probably got like two hours sleep or something. So would I, so would me dunking my face in a bottle Absolutely. of water do the same thing? Yeah, there's two reasons. One I mentioned already because of that vagal nerve stimulation, and the second reason is it just provides a shock. So it breaks you out of this kind of stuck, monotonous mindset you might be in and just gives you a quick refresher. It's not obviously a fix for speaking to a psychiatrist or a psychologist if you have chronic mental health issues, but as a quick stress reliever, it's pretty good. So when should people do that, just when they're feeling stressed or tired? Yeah, you can do it first thing in the morning to wake you up and when you're feeling stressed. But, yeah, it's such a quick hack. And, actually, you can do the same thing with a cube of ice, rubbing it on your face or popping it in your mouth. It's just helps idea. to quickly boost that, uh, well, Great. beat stress. I do the yeah. cold shower sometimes, you know, when you just feel like, oh, I'm not feeling today. Mm. Do a cold shower and all of a sudden you just feel like How a different person. How long do you person. normally do that for? I try and do 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah. Cold shower. And it really does change your mindset. Yeah, it's it unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, what about adding salt instead of sugar to your coffee? Oh, that's a bit controversial. People oh. are probably thinking, what is going on? We've we got we... some. We can try it. We can try it now. Well, just I a don't pinch. Just a pinch. Taste sugar in my just coffee, a right? pinch. Just a pinch. Get your best salt bay out. Put a bit of pinch of salt, salt in bay. your coffee. <laughs> that's the guy that I just take restaurant. He just yeah. goes like that and then <laughs> like charges you salt like salt bag. A couple of hundred thousand quid pounds. Like. Yeah. So, what do we do? So, just a pinch of salt in your coffee, stir it in there, and you what might be thinking, I'm mad but this actually boosts the sweetness and reduces bitterness. I actually can... It does taste right? sweeter. So is this, hang on, is this the same principle as when we have salted caramel? Exactly the same reason. Salted caramel, the reason that works, and actually they add salt to the coffee in I Turkey. I nothing, as in I don't taste like... Yeah. It doesn't taste salty. Oh, I do. So the salt actually got? inhibits the bitterness. What are you drinking? What are you drinking? <laughs> you drinking honey and lemon? <laughs> Maybe don't do it with honey and lemon, but with coffee it does work. Nice try, Alison. You've got to go spool us with that one. Lemon, yeah, anyway. Honey and lemon. It's like, now you're just drinking Lovely. salty honey and lemon. You'd actually, the salt, <laughs> boost the flavour profile of um, sour and sweetness and it inhibits bitterness. So this is more of a cover-up if you've got poor quality coffee beans. Uh, but if you've got good quality coffee beans, you don't need to try this. Is, hang on, is the point of this to not take sugar? Is that the whole...? It can help you reduce the amount of sugar you take, and obviously it's just a tiny pinch of salt, so it works by hacking your senses, essentially. So wow. it's a nice little hack. Amazing. As I said, they do it like already in Turkey. For Turkish coffee, yeah. Scandinavian countries, they do this. Yeah. You know, they get a bit of rock Turkish salt. Turkish coffee comes with a bit of a kick as well, doesn't it? Mm. So, yeah. We can always learn things we from can. other countries. Absolutely. So uh, I like it. Trouble sleeping. Have a hot shower before bed. I love a shower before bed. Oh, mm. but normally, I do it... If I've had a really long day, or normally I do it in the summer. But you should do it all the time. So, for the same reason that a cold shower in the morning can help you boost your alertness, a warm shower in the evening can wind you, down. wind you down because our core body temperature falls as we go to sleep. And the lower it is, the more quickly we'll fall asleep. A hot shower or a warm shower initially makes you hot and your body rapidly cools off. Yeah. So you get to sleep oh. faster if you have a hot shower before bed. I love a shower it makes sense. Bed. Yeah. Me too. It's so nice. What about a bath before bed? I yeah. rarely do a bath before Oh, bed. I've been having... Because, obviously, I'm doing panto pants. at the moment and I'm, like, exercising quite mm. a lot. 
I'm enjoying salt baths. Oh, yeah. They're really good. She that sits good, there. Dr. She puts yeah. salt in the honey and lemon. It relaxes you. Salt in the bath. She can't get enough of the salt. Yeah, I love a bit of salt. Okay, up your fibre intake yeah. for better gut health. I mean, that sounds That's common no sense, brain. right? Come on. Common sense, but actually there's lots of unexpected sources of fibre. You don't have to go and eat stuff. That's why we got a bit of paprika here. Oh, okay. nuts. So, paprika, well, it's not nuts, it's... Uh, oh, hey, it's yeah. a herb. Hey. Um, so, a tablespoon of paprika, OK, this is slightly more than a tablespoon, but a tablespoon of paprika has 20% of your vitamin C intake for the day and up to 10% of your fibre. No. So, you're having some pasta or some rice or whatever, just put it in your food. That's it. The smoked paprika count, because I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And any powdered paprika, we forget sometimes this is fibre. These are antioxidants. So, yeah, it's an easy hack to just sprinkle on your food yeah. and you're getting more fibre. Crack on. Put it on your salad. salad. Anything. You're done. Yeah. Uh, I think we've touched on this before. On the January detox question mark, blend don't juice. Yeah, we have touched on it before. So, juicing removes that pulp and the fibre. So, it defibrizes your food, if that's even a real word. You want to... If you want to have some fruits and vegetables, you know, blend it... So it retains that fibre. And sometimes, if you're having seeded fruits, it can unlock some of the fibre trapped in those seeds. So it's a great way to get more fruit and vegetables. Right, so if you are blending... So yeah. if I was to blend our definitely not fake apple yeah. here, and would, would, it, would I get the same out of it if, if I just ate it? So, in terms of nutritional value, you get pretty much the same. So, blending doesn't take anything out no, of it? No, no, because if that apple can survive your digestive tract and all this the This apple acids, can survive my digestive tract and we're in a lot of It can of survive <laughs> 30 seconds in a blender. So, yeah, absolutely. OK. Yeah. But there's but nothing wrong with juicing still, though, is there? Juicing is still a nice thing to do. Yeah, I like it, juicing. Yeah, it's nothing wrong with it, but if you're kind of worried about the fibre, the nutrition, juicing does remove some of those fibre compounds and the antioxidants. Yeah. So, it's fine once in a while. Uh, but it's a better idea, particularly if you're diabetic, to have that fibre content in to mm. reduce spikes in your blood sugar. OK, Doc. Um, what else have we got here? What about sitting on the toilet correctly? Oh, and see, that's why we've got this. So, well, just to demonstrate, this? everyone. So, this is a yoga block, right? But if you've got, like, a yoga block, a rolled-up towel, or even one of those tiny stools at home, you can literally pop this under your feet. What, okay? so elevate your feet? Yeah, elevate your knees. So, you're kind of... Your, your knees are above your hips slightly, OK? And oh, in this position... That just doesn't position... sound nice enough, sorry. I just need to... Oh, yeah, Stop right. it, Dave! <laughs> so, if I get a bit too sciencey, stop me. But in this position your pelvic floor muscles are more relaxed because your knees are above the level wow. of your hips. One of the main... So we've been making toilets It's wrong. The Western toilet is a death trap for your bowels. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It increases the risk of hemorrhoids. So if you look at African countries, Asian countries... We should be stooping. Yeah, the, the rate what? of hemorrhoids and all sorts of things are way less than in Western countries because probably fibre in the diet and the Western toilet has something to do with it as well. That's really interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. You need to get one of those toilets that are just on the floor. So, what, yeah, what's the best... What is the best toilet? So, well, you can actually adopt a slight squatting-type position by raising your feet slightly so it relaxes your pelvic floor so you're straining less and your poop dynamics are a lot better, yeah, basically. That's what you need. Uh, improve your balance by to protect your joints. Yeah, so, again, you can, you can try this, this with me sense. if you want. So, if you stand on one leg... Yeah. All right? My balance is Stand terrible. on one leg yeah. and then close your eyes. Whoa! Yeah? So if you do I'm that for a small amount, and if you want to challenge yourself even further, tilt your head to one side. Ah! Oh, my goodness. What that does... I'm all over the place. Too. So you're, you're actually improving your sixth sense, which is proprioception, your I'm sense of space and balance. And that's what your joints need to be stronger, your ligaments and supporting uh, tissues around your joints. And you can actually strengthen your proprioception by doing that and kind of safeguard yourself against injury. Yeah, see? I'm all over the place. Yeah. So what, should we do that, like, a minute a day or two yeah, minutes a do, day? do that for as long as you can, uh, you know, a minute every now and then, and it just strengthens your sense of balance and coordination and reduces your risk of knee injuries, hip injuries <sighs> and back injuries as well. This is great. Wow. Yeah. Protecting um, our hearing. That's really important, oh, isn't it? Go on. Protecting your hearing. So... 
We have about 16,000 hair cells. <laughs> we thought you didn't hear us for a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 16,000 hair cells in your ears. Yeah. And once they're damaged, you can't get them back. They don't regrow or repair themselves. So if you're constantly going to loud concerts and listening to music on your headphones, iPhone... Yeah. yeah. So if you're using I'm headphones... About I'm about yeah. 60% volume for no longer than 60 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So above 70 decibels, that's quite damaging for prolonged periods of time for yeah. human hearing. Right. Right. A normal conversation like we're having now is 60 decibels. A whisper is around 35 decibels. 60% on your iPhone would be around 60, 65 decibels, which is fine. Anything longer than that for or over an hour right. constantly can, you know, risk causing it's chronic really hearing damage. Is isn't it? So what about when you're at a gig or a cinema or yeah. something? I mean, you can't, you can't put... Well, if you're at a gig especially, a cinema, I guess, is not too bad, but at a gig especially, where it's so loud and you have that muffled hearing afterwards, yes. that is... So, that your hair cells actually being, you know, bent. That's what that sound is. And what you should do is probably wear those earplugs, where you can still hear the yeah. sound, but it filters some of those harsher frequencies of sound which can damage your hearing. Wow, OK. Do you think some of us could be already damaged then? Absolutely. Because we've been to yeah. those concerts, yeah. we, we listen to headphones. We will lose certain frequencies of sound and that will just get worse as we go older. You know, sensory neural hearing loss. OK, then. Uh, improve your posture to breathe freely. Discuss. So posture's, you know, one of the things which... There's a bit of a myth around posture. So if I'm just lying there like that, that's not bad posture, I'm not slouching. Because the normal... Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you hearing this? Because who, who stands like this? That's not she normal for the human spine. All the time. Right? Sorry. I just... I'm only... only like for your own, it's only for your own well-being, because <laughs> I think you. about your back and you things do, like that, and sometimes you. you do slouch a lot. Thank you. No, don't, don't take Only a little don't bit. Don't take it <laughs> Only a little bit. <laughs> but uh, it's like one of those meerkats that like to be... Uh, <laughs> it's just Dermot, though, isn't it? You, if you know Dermot, that's how he, that's how he is. He's very yeah. slouchy. So that's just fine. <laughs> slouchy. <laughs> Have but you listen, posture. you need to improve it. Well, let's listen to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> listen, if you're, if you're in a contorted body position for long periods of time, that's actually causing pain in your joints, that is bad for your overall joints and things like that. But actually, just doing that occasionally or, you know, just lying down on your sofa like that, that's not bad posture. It's yeah. not going to affect your joints and spine. What about if you're uh, at a desk and you're working, what's the best? Yeah, if you're on your phone, over your desk, constantly like that, that is bad over time. So, actually, every 20 minutes, go and take a break, walk around. Mm. Not necessarily just sitting up, just Ding. actually go and walk around and mobilise. Ding. And what if you're a TV presenter? Ding. What sort of posture do you think we should have for that? Whatever you want. Oh, there you go. Whatever you want. I forgot, by the way. Can you just... And I know we, we're, Ooh, we're taking the time now, but, yeah, the red cup. Can we just finish on the red cup? The red cup. Why have I got a red cup when yeah. I'm drinking something sweet? Why? It'll make it taste even sweeter. No. The reason is... Taste is about more... Flavour perception, as a rule, is more than just about your taste buds. It's about all the senses combined. Your visuals, what you hear. If you hear something that's more crunchy, you think it's more fresh. If you see something red, we that's commonly true. associate red things with something sweet, green things with something that's sour, black with bitter. So red, psychologically, there have been studies done on this by an Oxford professor, Charles Spence, and he suggested that red cups can reduce the amount of sugar you add in your coffee or tea, and it makes it taste sweeter as well. Who knew that? That's great, isn't it? That's unbelievable. Thanks, yeah. Dr Curran. Thank you, Dr Curran. That's brilliant. It is competition time now, and it's...